dear friends once again it's hearty welcome today we have to discuss about the gynaecium we have to discuss about the carpel we have to discuss about the ovule we have to discuss about the megasporogenesis we have to discuss about the development of female gametophyte embryo sac etc so now let us start the study of second reproductive worm that is gynaecium gynaecium all of you are very well aware that gynaecium it is second essential worm you know the first essential worm is andraecium and gynaecium is second essential worm also it is an innermost worm of the flower it is also known as female reproductive worm female reproductive worm now in 11th we have studied that the single single individual unit of gynaecium is known as carpel single individual unit of gynaecium is known as carpel or it may be called as pistil it may be called as pistil now typical carpel consists of three main parts typical carpel consists of three main parts we know that the upper receptive spot upper receptive portion of the carpel is known as stigma you know it is called receptive part or receptive point of the carpel because during pollination the pollen grains are received here by stigma middle part you know it is known as style it is either short or long and the most important that is basal larger and solen part that is nothing but the ovary that is nothing but the ovary in 11th we have studied in 11th we have studied that the number of carpels are variable from plant to plant number of carpels are variable from plant to plant means in some flowers in some plants the gynaecium has only one carpel then such gynaecium is called monocarpellary gynaecium in some flowers i said the gynaecium has only one carpel such gynaecium is called monocarpellary and the flowers in which more than one carpels are present then such gynaecium is called polycarpellary gynaecium now in polycarpellary gynaecium in polycarpellary gynaecium it means the gynaecium or the flower in which such many carpels are present then if that carpels are fused then it is called syncarpus and if the carpels are free from each other it is called you know apocarpus condition or may be called apocarpus flower all these things we have studied in 11th now just as i said the gynaecium i'm sorry the carpel which is the single individual unit of gynaecium has three major parts stigma style and ovary ovary it is most important part at maturity within the ovary cavity within the ovary cavity single or many ovules are born at maturity within the ovary cavity ovary cavity either a single or many ovules are born many ovules are born the number is variable the number is variable say in mango in mango only single ovule is produced within ovary cavity in mango single ovule is born single 
ovule is produced within the ovary cavity not only in mango another examples are there lychee or in cashew also only single ovule is born single ovule is produced within the ovary while i would like to tell you that in orchids more than 1 million of ovules listen more than 1 million of ovules are born within the ovary it means the number of ovules born within single ovary is variable from plant to plant okay now we people have to study here about the ovule aplyala ya thikani ovules of abhyas karaycha which is most important topic and most important part related with sexual reproduction so let us talk about the ovule let us talk about the ovule is also known as four runner of seed four runner of seed ovule is also defined as four runner of seed why because after the process of fertilization after the process of fertilization the ovule undergoes some noticeable changes and is converted into seed mala vatta aplya lakshat aalo ase angiosperms madhe fertilization chi process jhalyanantar fertilization chi process jhalyanantar ti process aplyala shikaychi che ya chapter madhe pan fertilization chi process jhalyanantar ya ovule madhe kai badal hota ani ovule cha rupantar pude jaun seed madhe hot asta ani manun ovule is known as forerunner of seed ovule may be known as integumented megasporangium integumented megasporangium integumented megasporangium now why this is so that you will understand very very soon in next few minutes first of all i would like to tell you that in angiosperms in angiospermic plants depending upon the shape and orientation ovules are classified into six different types listen carefully in angiosperms depending upon the shape and orientation of ovule there are six different types of ovules six different types of ovules actually its study is not given in our textbook but for your extra knowledge here i am going to talk briefly so let me tell you which are those six different types of ovules found in angiospermic plants let me tell you we people have to study the structure of ovule after 5 minutes but before to that i want to tell you little bit about the structure of ovule little bit about the structure of ovule we shall study in detail about the structure of ovule after 5 to 7 minutes the ovule typically consists of two main parts the ovule typically consists of two main parts ovule ji rachana detail aplya pas minute nantar shikaychi pan ya thikani आता जस मी मटल कि ओव्यूल के वेगवेगे सहा प्रकार पड़े जता समझुन घे थोड़क मी ओव्यूल के कई प्रमुख भाग आव्यूल रचने बाबत थोड़ा सा आधी बोलते हैं आई से जस्ट नाउ दैट द ओव्यूल हैज टू मेन पार्ट्स दिस लोअर स्टॉक लेग स्ट्रक्चर दिस लोअर स्टॉक लेग स्ट्रक्चर इज नोन एज फ्यूनिकल और फ्यूनिक्यूलस हा जो ओव्यूल खाली देठा सारा भाग है स्टॉक ऑफ द ओव्यूल नोन एज फ्यूनिकल और फ्यूनिक्यूलस एंड दिस अपर लार्ज मैस्यू पार्ट इज नोन एज बॉडी ऑफ ओव्यूल हा जो वर का मैस्यू पार्ट है जता बॉडी 
ठीक है आता दिस बॉडी हैव सो मेनी डिफरेंट कंपोनेंट्स दैट वी शॉल स्टडी लेटर ऑन बट दिस बॉडी हैज अ स्मॉल ओपनिंग एट इट्स टिप दिस ओपनिंग इज कॉल्ड माइक्रोपाइल दिस ओपनिंग इज कॉल्ड माइक्रोपाइल एंड द बेस ऑफ बॉडी द बेस ऑफ बॉडी ही जी बॉडी आहे ओव्यूल ची त्याचा जो बेस आहे त्याला म्हटलं जातं चॅलेज त्याला म्हटलं जातं चॅलेज इज कॉल्ड ऑर्थोट्रॉपस ओव्यूल ऑर्थोट्रॉपस ओव्यूल पहिला प्रकार आहे ऑर्थोट्रॉपस ओव्यूल इट इज सी इन पॉलिगॉन पॉलिगॉन बाय ड्रॉइंग हिअर डायग्राम Let me tell you. The orthotropus means vertical or straight ovule. See here. Vertical or straight ovule. Means in such ovule, in such ovule, the funicle, chalaza, and micropyle are present along the straight. वर्टिकल एक्सिस दे आर अलॉन्ग द स्ट्रेट लाइन इन द स्ट्रेट वर्टिकल एक्सिस फ्यूनिकल चैलेजा एंड माइक्रोपाइल सच वर्टिकल और स्ट्रेट ओव्यूल इज नोन एज ऑर्थोट्रोपस सेकेंड इज एनोट्रोपस ओव्यूल एनोट्रोपस एग्जाम्पल हेलियंथस प्लांट हेलियंथस Anotropus means anotropus means inverted ovule. Look at the diagram. Inverted. Let me show. Inverted ovule. You can see. Here is the funiculus that is top. Here is the chalaza that is base, and this opening that is micropyle. Now here you please notice that the funiculus. is bend in about 180 degree and that's why that's why the body is inverted in position such inverted ovule is called anotropous ovule third one is hemitropous ovule hemitropous ovule hemitropous actually hemitropous ovule it is the type of ovule intermediate between orthotropous and anotropus let me tell you by drawing the diagram its example is ranunculus see here now look here is a funicle that is stalk base that is chalaza and micropyle means this ovule is neither straight nor completely inverted therefore i said it is supposed to be the it is supposed to be the intermediate between orthotropous and anotropous next one is campylotropous fourth one is campylotropous campylotropous ovule say for example mustard master now in campylotropus ovule in campylotropus ovule the chalaza and micropyle are present chalaza and micropyle are present either side of the funicle look here this is funicle this is micropyle and this is chalaza Micropyle and chalaza are present on either side of the funicle. It is due to the curved body. Fifth type, fifth type is given that is amphitropous ovule. Amphitropous ovule. Example of amphitropous ovule is capsella. now here in amphitropous ovule the body is exactly horse shoe shaped body is exactly horse shoe shaped look here micropyle 
Chalaza funicular. The body is exactly horseshoe shaped. And the last type is Sarsinotropus ovule. Sarsinotropus ovule. Sarsinotropus ovule is seen in Opuntia. In Opuntia. In Opuntia, here I am going to draw a diagram here because of limited space. In this type of ovule, the funicle is very much elongated, stalk is very much elongated and it encircles the body from all sides. It encircles the body from all sides. Look here, this is the funiculus, funicle that is stalk. It is very much elongated and it encircles, it surrounds the body from all sides. This is called sarsinotropus. Okay, so these are the six types of ovules based upon the shape and orientation of body. Now, out of these different types of ovules, in about 82% of the angiospermic plants, anotropous ovule is seen. Out of this, out of this, six different types of ovules six different types of ovules the anotropous ovule is commonly seen and therefore we people have to study about the structure of anotropous ovule inverted ovule that I told you just now. Now let us see which are the major parts and simultaneously what are the functions of the different parts of anotropous ovule. Basically I told you few minutes before the ovule it consists of two main parts such as funicle and body. There are two main parts of the ovule two main parts of the ovule such as funicle and second body funicle and body so first of all let us talk about the funicle before to that here i am going to draw a rough diagram of anotropous ovule please look at the blackboard I am going to use the colors for your proper understanding. Here I have drawn the outline of anotropous ovule. As I said just now, anotropous ovule it consists of two main parts such as funicle and body. First of all, let us talk about the funicle. First of all, let us talk about the funicle. The funicle is nothing but a slender, either short or long stalk 
of the ovule. It is simply the stalk of the ovule. It is a slender part. Look at the diagram. Here I have shown with the help of green color. This is the stalk. This is nothing but the funicle. This is nothing but the funicle. This is funicle. That is the stalk. That is the stalk. Now, the one end of this funicle is in contact with the placenta. One end of this funicle is in contact with the placenta. I hope you do remember in 11th we have studied that placenta it is a specialized nutritive and fertile tissue which connects the wall of ovary with the ovule. Please look at the diagram. Suppose here is the ovary wall. You just imagine. Here is supposed to be the wall of ovary. Yati karni hi ovary chi wall da koli liye. Ani ya ovary cha wall da ovule shi zodun de nara ha zo parenchymatous tissue ahe jala apan placenta asa mantu. Artha फ्यूनिकल हा प्लासेंटाला चिकटलेला असतो एक तो फ्यूनिकलचं हे प्लासेंटाला चिकटलेला असतं अँड यू नो ॲट अनदर एंड ए बॉन द बॉडी दुसऱ्या टोकाला अर्थातच बॉडी ही त्या ठिकाणी निर्माण झालेली असते सो व्हॉट डिड आय से फ्यूनिकल इज नथिंग फ्यूनिकल इज नथिंग स्लेंडर आयदर शॉर्ट or long stalk of the ovule stalk of the ovule funicle may be called as the funiculus now this funiculus this funiculus is present in some ovule such ovules are called as funiculate ovules funiculate or stalk ovule presence of funicle therefore called funiculate or stalk ovule and those ovules in which funicle is absent known as sessile s e w -S, s i l e sessile it means we can say the ovule with funicle is called funiculate or stalked ovule and the ovule without funicle without stalk is known as sessile now function of funicle very simple funicle it acts as the connecting bridge between the ovary wall and body second the funicle is responsible for the production or transportation of nourishment from placenta up to the body because this funicle contain the vascular tissue vascular strand that is xylem and phloem and the funicle it gives support to the body so here we have discussed about the funicle i am going to repeat once again i said that anotropous ovule consists of two main parts such as funicle and body funicle it is slender either short or long stalk of the ovule funicle is also called funiculus this funiculus or funicle is in contact with the placenta and its another end body is born the funicle is responsible to give support Funicle is responsible for the conduction of nourishment from placenta up to the body and I said the ovule with funicle is known as funiculate and the ovule without funicle is known as the sessile ovule. Now let us talk about the body. Let us talk about the body. The body it is upper, large, oval and massive part. You can see in diagram with the help of white chalk I have shown the body. It is upper part. It is upper part. But you know in anotropous ovule it is inverted. So this upper large oval part is known as the body. The body consists of different components. It consists of different structures. Let us see one by one each. First one. First one. Integuments. First one, integuments. Let me show you. Let me tell you. Integuments. 
integuments these are outer protective coverings these are outer protective coverings of the body of ovule please look at the diagram here i have shown the integuments these are the integuments so integuments these are outer protective coverings of the body of ovule in most of the ovules the integuments are two in number the ovule with two integuments is called bitegmic ovule bitegmic bi stands for two tegmic stands for the integument if there are two integuments then such ovule is called bitegmic manje te ovule cha body bhuti jo do integuments astil ta asha ovule la bitegmic ovule mantat ani jar there is a presence of single integument then it is known as the uni tegmic ovule uni stands for one now what is the role of integument integuments i already told you these are protective in nature it means that integument protects all internal structures which are internal structures that we shall study within few minutes but first these are protective in nature and second during seed formation the integuments gets converted into seed coat seed coat that is the outer tough protective coverings present around the seed it means after fertilization integuments are converted into seed coat that's all about the integuments now come to the second part that is chalaza second part of the body of ovule that is chalaza 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 is nothing but the base of body of ovule base of body of ovule actually chalaza is the region of origin of integuments please look at this diagram these integuments these integuments they originate from they originate from this chalaza few points i want to add in this discussion while teaching you the funicle i told you that funicle is nothing but the stalk but two points here i want to add the point of contact of the funicle and body is called hilla please look at the diagram the point of contact of funicle and body is called hilla let me show now suppose this is the funicle and here first of all this funicle first of all this funicle has come in contact with the body here isn't it here first of all and that's why this region or this point this region or this point of contact of funicle and body is known as hilla is known as hilla and and beyond hilla look beyond hilla the funicle and body togetherly forms a common longitudinal ridge beyond hilla hilla nantar ha jo funiculus ahe to funiculus body la chikatlela aslyamule dogai milun एक रीच एक स्ट्रक्चर कॉमन स्ट्रक्चर तैयार करता दिस कॉमन लॉन्जिट्यूडिनल रीच फॉर्म बाय द फ्यूजन ऑफ फ्यूनिकल विथ द बॉडी इज नोन इज नोन एज रैफी इट इज नोन एज रैफी रैफी अपन एक शब्द अपन ये लक्षित now come back ata parat apan aplya mul mudya kade yetoy that is nothing but the chalaza while teaching you the body i said that the body externally covered by means of either one or two integument then i said the base of body is known as the chalaza or it is the 
प्लेस ऑफ ओरिजिन ऑफ इंटेग्युमेंट्स या चनेजा पास इंटेग्युमेंट से निर्माण होता नेक्स्ट कंपोनेंट इज मैक्रोपाइल नेक्स्ट कंपोनेंट इज मैक्रोपाइल नेम इट सेल्फ इंडिकेट माइक्रो स्टैंड फॉर वेरी स्मॉल एंड पाइल स्टैंड फॉर फरो स्लीट ओपनिंग लो एट द टिप ऑफ बॉडी ऑफ ओव्यूल एट द टिप ऑफ बॉडी ऑफ ओव्यूल ओव्यूल ची जी बॉडी है वरिया टोकाला देर इज अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ नैरो वर्टिकल स्लीट नैरो वर्टिकल ओपनिंग इट मीन्स दिस एरिया इज नॉट कवर्ड बाय द इंटेग्युमेंट्स इंटेग्युमेंट्स नहीं है एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ इंटेग्युमेंट्स वॉट एवर सच नैरो वर्टिकल स्लीट इज फॉर्म इट इज नोन एज द मैक्रोपाइल इट इज नोन एज द मैक्रोपाइल Simultaneously and briefly, I want to tell you the function of micropile. Micropile it provides passage for the entry of pollen tube at the time of fertilization. Entry of pollen tube. I hope you do remember. In my last lecture, we have seen pollen tube. Okay, carrying that male gametes. So that pollen tube enters into the ovule through this micropile at the time of fertilization and second the remnant of this micropyle remnant of this micropyle it facilitates the entry of water into the seed at the time of seed germination you know seed germination marathi madhyam bijankuran javela seed cha germination hoto bijankuran hoto tya velela tya seed la aslelya ya lahan sha opening madun पानी सीड मध्य शिरत पर बीजांकुरा की क्रिया ही शक्य होती पर टेम्पररीली यू जस्ट रिमेम्बर वॉट इज मैक्रोपाइल इट इज अ स्मॉल वर्टिकल स्लीट प्रेजेंट एट द टिप ऑफ बॉडी ऑफ ओव्यू कम टू द नेक्स्ट दैट इज न्यूसेलस नेक्स्ट कंपोनेंट ऑफ द बॉडी दैट इज न्यूसेलस आय से न्यूसेलस इट इज नॉट न्यूक्लियस इट इज न्यूसेलस वॉट इज न्यूसेलस न्यूसेलस इज नथिंग बट सिंपली अ ग्रुप और मास ऑफ डिप्लॉइड थीन वॉल्ड कलरलेस पैरेन कैमेटस टिश्यू इट इज सिंपली अ मास ऑफ पैरेन कैमेटस टिश्यू यू नो पैरेन कायमा इन इलेवंथ वे हाउ स्टडी so nucellus is nothing but the mass or group of parenchymatous tissue diploid parenchymatous tissue you know in 11th we have studied that parenchyma also called as the ground tissue it is a living tissue its cell wall are thin am i right so let me show you the mass of diploid thin walled colorless parenchymatous tissue enclosed within the integuments is known as nucellus or nucellar tissue nucellus or nucellar tissue i am going to show there in diagram no these are supposed to be the parenchymatous cells these are supposed to be the parenchymatous cells so this mass of parenchymatous cells enclosed within the integuments enclosed within the integuments this is nothing but the nucellus this is nothing but the nucellus you can say this is nucellus okay these are the cells of nucellus nucellar tissue you can say nucellar cells nucellar tissue that is nucellus now what is the function of nucellus that you will understand very soon temporarily i want to tell you the megasporogenesis megasporogenesis that is process of formation of megaspore takes place in this nucellar tissue and also it occurs the development of female gametophyte within this nucellus how is that process we have to study separately 
याचा अर्थ या न्यूसेलस मध्ये मेगास्कोरोजेनेसिस होत मेगास्कोरोजेनेसिस म्हणजे काय ते आपल्याला आता शिकायला मिळणार आहे तसंच या न्यूसेलस मध्ये फिमेल गॅमेटोफाईट तयार होतो तोही कसा तयार होतो तेही आपल्याला शिकायचंय या ठिकाणी हे जे मी स्ट्रक्चर काढलंय इट इज ऍक्च्युली द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ इमॅच्युअर ओव्ह्यू इमॅच्युअर ओव्ह्यू बट इन मॅच्युअर ओव्ह्यू या मॅच्युअर ओव्ह्यू मध्ये मात्र या न्यूसेलसच्या आतमध्ये न्यूसेलर टिश्यू मध्ये फिमेल गॅमेटोफाईट तयार झालेलं असत सो दॅट फिमेल गॅमेटोफाईट ऑल्सो आय एम गोईंग टू शो इन दिस डायग्राम लेट मी शो इन दिस डायग्राम Here is supposed to be the female gametophyte. Female gametophyte. It may be known as embryo sac. Why? That I will talk after some time. the female gametophyte develop within the nucellus consist of different structures see first structure is egg apparatus egg apparatus let me show in diagram you can see here i have shown the three cells together with constitute egg apparatus these three cells together with constitute egg apparatus ya teen cells cha gatala samuhala ekatrit pane egg apparatus manta of which of which this middle and larger cell is nothing but the egg cell egg cell it is haploid in nature you know egg cell nothing but the female gamete and these two laterally placed cells what here i have shown with the help of yellow chalk these two laterally placed cells are called as the synergid cells these are called synergid cells it means the egg cell and two laterally placed synergid cells togetherly togetherly known as a apparatus a apparatus now what is the role of this egg cell synergy cell that you people will study maybe in next topic but here also i am going to tell you briefly the egg cell it take part in the process of fertilization first fertilization what is first fertilization that we shall study later on and these synergy cells these synergy cells they facilitate the bursting of pollen tube how is that that also we shall study later on now here i have shown the egg apparatus that is the group of three cells now look this egg apparatus is present towards the micropylar end that is towards the micropyle isn't it you know this opening is called micropyle yacha arth या फिमेल गॅमेटोफाईट मध्ये हे जे एग ऍपरेटस आहे ते या मायक्रोपाईल कडे असत मायक्रोपाईल कडे असत टुवर्ड्स द मायक्रोपाईल एग ऑल्सो देर आर प्रेझेन्स ऑफ थ्री सेल्स थ्री हॅप्लॉइड सेल्स ग्रुप ऑफ थ्री हॅप्लॉइड सेल्स टुवर्ड्स द चॅलेजल एग टुवर्ड्स द चॅलेजल एग दॅट इज टुवर्ड्स द चॅलेजा अपोजिट पोल लो Egg apparatus is present towards the micropyle, towards the micropylar end. Why the child? Why these three cells, these three haploid cells, are present towards the chalaza? These three haploid cells are called are called as antipodal cells. Antipodal cells. These are haploid. Actually, these antipodal cells has no role. after the process of fertilization that antipodal cells degenerate antipodal cells la tasa vishesh karya nasta 
फर्टिलाइजेशन जार ये एंटीपोडन्सेस डी जनरेट होता एंड एट द सेंटर एट द मिडल ऑफ दिस फीमेल गैमेटोफाइट देर इज अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ देर इज अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ स्ट्रक्चर कॉल्ड एज सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लियस सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लियस इट इज डिप्लॉइड इन नेचर इट इज डिप्लॉइड actually this secondary nucleus is formed by the fusion of two haploid nuclei ha jo secondary nucleus mi ithe dakhola hai jaso mi atta matle ki to diploid hai pratyaksha ha secondary nucleus don haploid nuclei ekatra yun taiyar zalela asto kasa taiyar hoto te aplyala ata pudcha topic madhe shikaycha but temporarily here simply i am going to tell you the structure of anatropous ovule सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लियस सुधा डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन यू नो इट इज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर एंड यूनिक फीचर सीन इन एंजियोस्पर्मिक प्लांट्स डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन या प्रोसेस मध्य सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लियस पहभागी हो कार्य का फर्टिलाइजेशन का अपने पूरे शिका मिलना है हिय टेम्पररी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एनोट्रोपस ओव्यू so here i have explained you the different components of anatropous ovule let us take a fast and brief revision before going to the next topic pudcha topic kade jane apurvi he je atta mi tumhala sangitla tyachar mi fast revision deto hai be attentive i said that i said that the anatropous ovule consists of two main parts लक्ष दे एनाट्रोपस ओव्यूल कन्सिस्ट ऑफ टू मेन पार्ट सच एज फ्यूनिकल एंड बॉडी फ्यूनिकल ऑल्सो कॉल्ड फ्यूनिक्यूलस इट इज स्लेंडर आईदर शॉर्ट और लॉन्ग स्टॉक ऑफ द ओव्यूल हियर आई हेव शोन द फ्यूनिकल यू नो द फ्यूनिकल इज इन कॉन्टैक्ट विद द प्लसेंटा एंड इट एट इट्स अनादर एंड द बॉडी इज for body is produced what is the function of funicle that you are known it gives support to the body it acts as the connecting bridge between ovary wall and body and most important it conducts nourishment from placenta to the body then second major part that is body of the ovule body it is large massive and oval part it is upper part it consists of different components such as integuments you know integuments these are protective outer covering integuments are either one or two these are protective in nature they protect all these internal structures as well as during seed formation integuments gets converted into seed coat second chalaza you know chalaza is nothing but the base of body of ovule it is the place of origin of integument dusra shabd ta hi apan sangu shakto that chalaza it is slightly broad basal part of nucellus nucellus cha ha jo khalcha talacha bhag hai tela hi apan chalaza manu shakto then micropy micropy it is a small vertical opening present at the tip of body of ovule that's a karya mi sangitla it allows the entry of pollen tube into the body of ovule as well as its remnant its remnant allows the entry of water into the seed at the time of seed germination then nucellus that is nucellar tissue it is simply a mass of parenchymatous tissue mass of diploid parenchymatous tissue enclosed within the integuments here i have shown this nucellus in nucellus at maturity the female gametophyte is developed female gametophyte is called embryo sac you know female gametophyte means female gamete producing structure why it is called embryo sac that i will tell you later on the female gametophyte here i have shown with the help of yellow chalk it consists of different structures such as egg apparatus egg apparatus 
it is present towards the micropyle air apparatus it is nothing but the group of three cells in which the middle larger egg cell that is female gamete haploid egg cell and two laterally placed cells are called as the synergial cells then there are three haploid cells present towards the chalaza known as antipodal cells and at the center of female gametophyte there is a presence of single diploid mind where diploid secondary nucleus okay in this manner here we have studied how is the structure of typical anatropous ovule now we have to study about the megasporogenesis and development of female gametophyte yacha arth ya new cells madhe प्रत्यक्ष हे फिमेल गॅमेटोफाइट कसं डेव्हलप होतं ते आपल्याला या ठिकाणी शिकायचं आहे म्हणजे आता आपला टॉपिक आहे मेगास्पोरोजेनेसिस अँड डेव्हलपमेंट ऑफ फिमेल गॅमेटोफाइट मेगास्पोरोजेनेसिस अँड development of female gametophyte now listen what is megasporogenesis actually in my last lecture while studying the pollen grain stamen anther and development of male gametophyte in my previous lecture we came across the term microsporogenesis am i right microsporogenesis that is microsporo stands for microspore genesis formation process of formation of microspore that is pollen grain is called microsporogenesis you know we have studied in last lecture microsporogenesis that is the process of formation of microspore process of formation of pollen grain you know it takes place in the pollen sacs of anther and here is megasporogenesis megasporogenesis so megasporo stands for megaspore and genesis stands for formation formation of megaspore formation of megaspore the process of formation of megaspore the process of formation of megaspore from megaspore mother cell from megaspore mother cell is known as megasporogenesis so first of all we can say very simply megasporogenesis it is the process of formation of megaspore from megaspore mother cell and then we have to study how is the mechanism of development of female gametos female gametophyte look listen here i have drawn a small diagram showing immature anatropous ovule this is immature anatropous ovule why i am saying immature because in this ovule nucellus is present but the female gametophyte whatever shown here in this colorful diagram that female gametophyte is yet not developed okay so i said this is supposed to be the immature anatropous ovule now in this immature anatropous ovule initially it occurs megasporogenesis it occurs formation of megaspore and then there is a development of female gametophyte lakshat kya ya thikani he immature ovule mi kadlele hai ya immature ovule madhe aplyala integuments distal outer protective covering at madhe ha nucellus distal you know it is nothing but the diploid thin wall colorless parenchymatous tissue हा पॅरेन कायमा नावाच्या पेशी आहेत त्यांचा समूह आहे 
मात्र या ठिकाणी फिमेल गॅमेटोफाइट अजून तयार झालेला नाहीये आणि म्हणून याला आपण इमॅच्युअर ओव्ह्युल म्हणतो आता प्रत्यक्ष सुरुवात केला या न्यूसेलस मध्ये न्यूसेलर टिश्यू मध्ये मेगास्पोरोजेनेसिस म्हणजे मेगास्पोर कसा तयार होतो हे आपल्याला शिकायचं आहे फ्रेंड्स आय वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दिस न्यूसेलस दिस न्यूसेलर टिश्यू दिस मास ऑफ पॅरेंट कॅमेटस टिश्यू इज ऑल्सो नोन ॲज मेगास्पोरेंजियम मेगास्पोरेंजियम do you remember in our last lecture we have seen the pollen sacs are called microsporangia pollen sac is called microsporangium why because in that pollen sac pollen grains or microspores are formed therefore that pollen sacs are called microsporangia singular microsporangium now here is the megasporangium megasporangium nucellus is called megasporangium why because in nucellus megaspore is formed megaspore is formed therefore nucellus is called megasporangium and look this megasporangium that is nucellus is surrounded by what nucellus nucellus is surrounded by what nucellus is surrounded by megasporangium is surrounded by integuments isn't it that is the protective covering and you know the nucellus that is megasporangium surrounded by integument is nothing but the ovule therefore in my today's lecture when i started the teaching of ovule i said ovule is also called integumented megasporangium isn't it okay now let us see how is the process of megasporogenesis initially initially one of the nucellar cells one of the nucellar cells you can see here are presence of many nucellar cells out of these many nucellar cells generally the centrally placed nucellar cell but slightly towards the micropyle remember these two terms micropyle chalaza ओके ह्या ओव्ह्यूचे हे दोन टोक आपण कायम लक्षात ठेवायचे ह्या टोकाला आपण म्हणतो मायक्रोपायलर एंड या टोकाला म्हणतो चॅलेजल एंड याचा अर्थ या ओव्ह्यूलचा हा जो पोल आहे इकडचा जो बाजू आहे इकडची जी बाजू आहे ती कोणाकडे मायक्रोपायलकडे म्हणून त्याला आपण म्हणू मायक्रोपायलर एंड मायक्रोपायलर एंड आणि इकडची जी बाजू आहे ती चॅलेजाकडे म्हणून याला म्हणणार आपण चॅलेजल एंड आता मी असं म्हणत होतो की या ठिकाणी ह्या ज्या न्यूसेलसच्या असंख्य सेल्स आहेत त्यापैकी सर्वसाधारण मध्यभागी असणारी पण थोडीशी मायक्रोपाईल कडे असणारी एक न्यूसेलसची सेल एक न्यूसेलसची सेल ही डिफरन्शिएट होते लिसन वॉट डिड आय से आय सेट दॅट वन ऑफ द न्यूसेलर सेल्स यु नो हिअर आर प्रेझेन्स ऑफ मेनी न्यूसेलर सेल्स वन of these all nucellar cells generally present at the center but slightly towards the micropyle manje sarvasaharan madhyavagi pan thoda sa micropyle kade asnari ek nucellus chi cell undergoes differentiation differentiation means what it appears structurally and physiologically slightly different than remaining cells and this nucellar cell this nucellar cell acts as acts as megaspore mother cell megaspore mother cell do you remember these nucellar cells are nothing but the parenchymatous cells megaspore mother cell is also one of the nucellar cell so obviously it is also deployed in nature isn't it it is also deployed in nature so what did i say initially shuruvatila during megasporogenesis one of the nucellar cells undergoes differentiation and that cell acts as megaspore mother cell yacha artha ya thikani ja asankhya nucellus cha peshi ahet tyapaiki 
ही एक पेशी सर्वसाधारण सेंटरला पण थोडीशी मायक्रोपाईल कडे असणारी थोडीशी अंडरगोज डिफरेंशिएशन स्ट्रक्चरली अँड फिजिओलॉजिकली आणि आता ती काय म्हणून काम करणार आहे इट ऍक्ट्स एज द मेगास्पोर मदर सेल तिला मेगास्पोर मदर सेल असं म्हणतात आता आपल्या सोयीसाठी फॉर आवर कन्व्हिनियन्स लेट अस टेक आउट दिस मेगास्पोर मदर सेल आउट ऑफ दिस न्यूसेलस आपल्या सोयीसाठी ओके आपल्याला कळण्यासाठी मी ही मेगास्पोर मदर सेल बाजूला घेतोय मुद्दामच या ठिकाणी मी तिला येलो कलर दाखवतो ही मेगास्पोर मदर सेल आता मी इकडे बाजूला घेतलेली आहे यु नो दिस इज द मेगास्पोर मदर सेल डिप्लॉइड मेगास्पोर मदर सेल दिस डिप्लॉइड मेगास्पोर मेगास्पोर मदर सेल नाव अंडर गोज मिओसिस इट अंडर गोज मिओसिस यु नो मिओसिस इज नथिंग बट द रिडक्शन डिव्हिजन इन इलेव्हन्थ वी हॅव स्टडी मिओसिस it is a type of cell division in which parent cell divides into four daughter cell receiving half number of chromosome than the parent cell by ya thikane parent cell ka hai megaspore mother cell which is diploid hai arthat tichu meiosis reduction jhalya mule ticha pasun tayar hotat four daughter cells there are formation of four daughter cells four haploid daughter cells and these four haploid daughter cells are nothing but the megaspores these are nothing but the megaspores i told you already the process of formation of megaspore from megaspore mother cell is known as megasporogenesis so here so here this diploid megaspore mother cell this diploid megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form four haploid megaspores and these four haploid megaspores are arranged one above the other in a row therefore it is called linear tetrad linear tetrad tetrad group of four linear in a straight line म्हणजे हे चार मेगास्पोर्स हे अशा प्रकारे एकमेकावर रचलेले असतात अर्थात याला आपण लिनियर टेट्राड असं म्हणतो आपल्याला कल्पना शक्ती पाहिजे या ठिकाणी आता ही मेगास्पोर मदर सेल नाही राहिली तर तिचं रूपांतर झालंय चार मेगास्पोर्स मध्ये ना आउट ऑफ दिस फोर मेगास्पोर्स लो आउट ऑफ दिस फोर मेगास्पोर्स दी अपर थ्री मेगास्पोर्स अंडर गो डी जनरेशन अपर थ्री मेगास्पोर्स अंडर गो डी जनरेशन अपर थ्री मीन्स वॉट फ्रॉम मायक्रोपाईल टुवर्ड्स द सेंटर याचा अर्थ मायक्रोपाईल कडून ओव्हिओच्या सेंटर कडे जाणार आहे मग या ठिकाणी मायक्रोपाईल कडे या चार मेगास्पोर्स पैकी कुठला मेगास्पोर आहे दिस वन झेंट इट इट इज प्रेझेंट टुवर्ड्स द मायक्रोपाईल मीन्स फर्स्ट सेकंड अँड थर्ड दिज मेगास्पोर्स अंडर गो डी जनरेशन these undergo degeneration they degenerate hun jato nice hota only single megaspore remains there single megaspore which megaspore basal talala aslela kiwa i will say the megaspore towards the center of ovule barobar na ha jo megaspore to kuthe ata ya ovule cha center kade ahe kiwa chaleza kade ahe it is present towards the chaleza therefore this single the single basal or chalazal megaspore remains i will say it is chalazal chalazal ka mantu mi yala because it lie towards the chalaza it lie towards the chalaza therefore it is chalazal megaspore this single chalazal megaspore remains acts as and it acts as functional megaspore it acts as functional megaspore now this chalazal megaspore undergoes further development to form female gametophyte ata ya chalazal megaspore madhe kai badal hotat ani tyacha pasun tayar hota female gametophyte tumhala mahit ahe ya thikani he female gametophyte dakhole kasa tayar hota baguya now this chalazal megaspore ya thikani mi te chalazal megaspore la tatpurte ikade geto sir ikade geto hai consider this is the chalazal megaspore 
Okay? This chalazal megaspore. Now, this chalazal megaspore undergoes three successive free mitotic nuclear division. What did I say? This chalazal megaspore, you know it is haploid, isn't it? It is haploid. It has single nucleus and that nucleus is haploid, having single set of chromosomes. Ata yatsa zo nucleus se, yatsa kaya hota, it undergoes three successive free mitotic nuclear division. Manje kaya, ki tya thikani techa nucleus sa eka patho pat e, teen vede da, eka patho pat e, teen vede da, mitosis ya paddhati ni vibhajan hota. Mitosis ya paddhati ni. Artha, chromosomal number ha, same right. Let me show here. When, when, it occurs the first nuclear division there are formation of two daughter nuclei eka nucleus che don nuclei hoti then it occurs the second mitotic nuclear division that ikani dusra mitotic nuclear division zhala ultimately there are formation of in all four nuclei isn't it and again it occurs the third mitotic nuclear division so that there is a there are formation of in all eight nuclei there are formation of in all eight nuclei eight nuclei tayar zale eka che don dona che char ani chara che eight so i said the nucleus of this chalazal megaspore undergoes three successive free mitotic nuclear division to form in all eight haploid nuclei. Here are formation of eight haploid nuclei. Eight haploid nuclei. During this process, the chalazal megaspore enlarges in its size, grows in its size, and it derives nourishment, nutrition from the surrounding new cells. new cells tissue. You sell our cells it. The chakun tava nadish made milte. Ani, yachi growth pon hotaste, yachi size a wadataste. Now, this chalazal megaspore is showing in all eight haploid nuclei. Yatikade chamade art haploid nuclei. These eight haploid nuclei actually get separated into two groups, each containing four nuclei each. Let me show. Eight nuclei are here. Out of these eight nuclei, four nuclei at one pole and four nuclei at opposite pole. They are grouped at opposite poles. Each group contains four nuclei. You know that these four nuclei are towards which end? Micropylar end. Isn't it? And these four nuclei are towards the chalazal end. Okay. Now, out of these two groups of four nuclei each, out of these two groups of four nuclei each, single nucleus migrate towards the center. The only groups modun ek ek haploid nucleus ha central line to and fuse together, fuse together. Ekatraita and there is a formation of let me use the another color. The only groups modun ek ek nucleus central ala and to unite hutu and there is a formation of diploid secondary nucleus. Diploid secondary nucleus. Am I right? This nucleus is deployed. Why deployed? Because you know it is formed by the union by the fusion of two haploid nuclei coming from two groups from two opposite poles. As these two nuclei come from opposite pole, as these two nuclei come from opposite poles, these nuclei are also called polar nuclei. 
polar because they come from the opposite poles and fuse together, unite together to form the diploid secondary nucleus. Okay. Now, here you can see there are three nuclei towards the micropylar end and three nuclei towards the chalazal end. All these nuclei get organized into cells. Then so upantar patient madhe hota, mande tarati kani cells construct hota. Let me show. Here are formation of three cells towards the micropylar end in the same manner. Here are formation of three cells at the chalazal end. Here the kani three cells there hota. Now look, the group of three cells. The group of three cells present towards the micropylar end. The group of three cells present towards the micropylar end, togetherly called as egg apparatus. Am I right? Togetherly called as egg apparatus. Please compare this diagram with this female gametophyte. The same colors here I have used for your proper understanding. Look. These three cells, these three cells togetherly represent the egg apparatus in which the middle larger cell is nothing but the egg cell, haploid egg cell that is female gamete, female gamete and these two laterally placed cells are nothing but the synergy cells, okay. So egg cell and these two synergy cells togetherly represent Egg apparatus present towards micropyle, present towards micropylar end. The three cells formed towards the chalazal end are known as the antipodal cells. Antipodal cells and this nucleus deployed secondary nucleus. So this structure, this structure containing eight nuclei and seven cells. Please try to understand. This structure containing 8 nuclei and 7 cells. Once again listen. 8 nuclei. Are you agree? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Though now that nuclei are fused. But actually these are 2. So these 8 nuclei. And how many cells are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is nothing but the large cell, centrally placed cell. So such eight nucleated and seven cell structure is nothing but the female gametophyte. It is the female gametophyte. It is the female gametophyte. What is female gametophyte? female gamete producing structure, female gametophyte. In this manner, in these new cellars, the female gametophyte is formed. So here we have seen how is the process of megasporogenesis and then the development of female gametophyte. One more point. This female gametophyte form is described as monosporic endosporic and polygonum type. Here I am going to write three words. He ja asha prakar cha female gametophyte tayar zalat. Yala asha prakar e describe kira zata. Monosporic type. Endosporic. And polygonum. Means what? Monosporic means the female gametophyte is formed within single megaspore. Are you agree? Here we have seen this chalazal megaspore it undergoes development and form the female gametophyte. So it is formed within single megaspore therefore called monosporic. Mono one sporic megaspore. Endosporic endo inside the female gametophyte is formed within the megaspore 
endospore and polygon means it shows many nuclei here i have written it contain the eight nuclei and that's why such female gametophyte is called or it is described as monosporic endosporic and polygonal type of female gametophyte in this manner we have studied today about the carpel gynaecium you know carpel is called megasporophyll megasporophyll carpel is called megasporophyll last time we have seen the stamen is called microsporophyll that is microspore producing leaf or leaf like structure carpel is called megaspore producing leaf or leaf like structure then the ovule is called integumented megasporangium nucellus is called megasporangium and within the megasporangium it occurs the megasporogenesis that is formation of megaspore and that megaspore develops into the female gametophyte that's all about this topic megasporogenesis and development of female gametophyte you people have to remember the pollen grain has already gets converted into male gametophyte in our last lecture we have seen there is a formation of pollen tube carrying two male gametes of course towards the ovary and ovule and now here in ovary here is the ovule with female gametophyte and female gamete so the next topic is pollination that we shall study in our next lecture thank you all the best